get this mic in the right position. Hey guys, it's DC here, and today we're gonna to talk about getting an entry-level job in cybersecurity. Now, as you've probably heard, there's a lot of jobs that are posted out online on different job posting websites that are asking for some pretty crazy levels of experience to get into these jobs. This is the number one thing that I hear from people I do coaching sessions with or are writing resumes with or, or just talking to day to day where they're, they're really struggling to get that entry level job in cybersecurity straight out of university or having just completed a bunch of certifications. I'm breaking this video down into four different sections that I think are going to help you to get that entry level job in cybersecurity or at least give you an, an understanding of how to you know, get started with getting started. Now, as I just mentioned, a lot of these jobs are asking for a lot of experience, sometimes five years experience, but from what I've seen, it, it's gotten a little bit better in the last year where um, the jobs that are asking for a high level of experience are probably not entry level, they're more like a, a mid level job. Now, these jobs are usually the pen testing roles, the ones that everyone wants to get usually, but that doesn't mean there's no entry level jobs in cybersecurity. An example of this is with some of the jobs I've seen, the entry level positions that are, are posted up for um, pen testing roles are asking for around five years experience. Now, this obviously depends on where you are in the world. Like sometimes the jobs in India are asking for 10 levels of experience for an entry level job and that sucks. But that's not the end of it, to be honest. There's, there are more jobs out there that you can get into. Now on the blue team side, there is the SOC analyst role, which is probably, I would say, the best role to get into as an entry level. You've just finished university, done a bunch of certs, maybe have some experience on a help desk role. There is also GRC, but um, that takes a, a very special kind of person to do. And for someone like me, who I, I consider myself to be a little bit more creative and um, I like to get things done quickly, GRC doesn't really fit with me. It's it's a, a slow roll, it's a slow burner, and it's, um, it's all about policy and risk. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, if you want to get a job as a SOC analyst, the required experience is usually one year or less. Now an entry level into this, a way to get into this role is to go to university first, that's a great way to get this role, and to complete an internship or to gain experience on something like a help desk to work your way into that position. Talking about experience, so there are different ways of gaining or showing your own experience if uh, professional experience is, is not one that you can get. If you want to gain professional experience, you can do the saferinternetproject.com workshop to get yourself some professional experience. Alternatively, you can do unpaid work experience, which some places like, some places don't. You could also do an internship somewhere. There's plenty of internships out there. You just need to search them online. But if you are in university, they usually have like a, a prac piece where you would then be going out to, to basically do unpaid work experience for a business. And um, sometimes you can work your way up from there. If you're doing the certification route though, those other options that I just mentioned before are probably the way to go that I would recommend. Alternatives to this is to build your own home lab systems, to also contract out on short-term contracts of three to six months, sometimes 12 months in a role. But keep in mind, a lot of these contract roles require you to have experience before getting into them because they really want you to hit the ground running. Or to do things like bug bounties and CTFs, although to be completely honest, those don't look the best on a resume. They're more of a um, this is my hobbies and this is how I learn type system. So they're, they're good for that, but um, for showing actual work experience, they're, they're not really worth it. Onto qualifications and something that came up in a chat uh, just yesterday with someone I was doing a resume for was they were essentially asking if they could put a, a course that they had completed as work experience and they were um, quite upset when I said no. If you're going to be presenting a resume to someone and you have professional work experience, as um, a title and then underneath it you have a course that's that's not professional work experience that's a course i wanted to get this one out of the way because i i thought it was quite an interesting take that this person wanted to take here with you know i've i've done this course and that's professional work experience and i was i was like no it's it's not it's a course if that was the case people with master's degrees and you know full <laughs> courses that they've done would consider that as professional working experience when 
in reality it's it's not it's an educational platform that you've learned from and it's it's education it's not work experience i will argue until the end of time on this point just by the way because i i know what these recruiters are asking for and and they really don't care if you've done that course and want to think of it as professional work experience because it, they'll just dismiss it as you miswrote something on your resume honestly Qualifications worth getting though to get into those entry level certifications are of course the OSCP, consider it entry level or not, that's up to you. The Security Plus is, is pretty good. The CYSA Plus is also quite good. And the CCNA is probably my number one recommended certification for anyone who's trying to get into anything IT. Now this brings me on to uh, the skills section, which is that Showing skills is very important. Having skills is obviously very important, but how do you show a skill if you don't have a certification to back you up or the experience to back you up? That's where you know things get a little bit tricky. Like I said earlier, you can build your own home labs and show off your uh, skills by doing those home labs and, and presenting them uh, to a job interview and on your resume. It does definitely help, trust me. Actually having something like the CCNA is it's just such a well-rounded certification that um, really does show skill in an area and it's a sought after certification. So it's it's not just a skillful cert, it's also a useful cert. I couldn't recommend a CCNA enough. The amount of people that I've talked to over the last three, four years who have had trouble getting in and then did a CCNA and were brought in into some sort of help desk job or um, as a network engineer or a network security engineer off that cert, if I, if I had a dollar for each, I'd I'd be a, a thousandaire. I'd probably have a thousand or so dollars. It really does help. And to be honest, for me, it, it helped me leaps and bounds. It got me my first uh, job outside of owning my own business, which was my jobs before that, because you know I just wanted to run the world and capitalize, but that didn't quite work out for me. But yeah, the CCNA is a great cert to show off your skill and also to get yourself into a job. So I've kind of merged certs and skills into one thing here, but you know what I mean. The last thing that's going to help you get a job in any job, not just entry level, is your personality. Now, personality depends on a lot of different things. If you have a great personality, you can keep a conversation going. You're going to be brought forward in, in a job interview because you're a personable person, you're relatable, you have confidence in the way you speak, and these traits are all very useful when you're working in literally any job ever. It's not to say that if you are a very reserved, introvert type person that you won't get a job, that's not the case at all. I just mean that, you know, trying to improve on your personality or conversation skills is very helpful for you and it's something I would absolutely recommend doing. You can improve in your personality or, or conversation skills by literally talking to people. That's always a great way to do it. Or by, if you wanna you know, get in with the cybersecurity crowds and, and gain some relationships out of it, you could also go to different meetup events and talk to people or join different Discord servers like my own Discord server. It's not a cult. And yeah, just, just basically talk with people about uh, professional experiences, about different tools that you're using, about questions you have, have in the industry or certifications or you know whatever it is get into those conversations because they do help you and they put you into the right sort of mental headspace to understand these concepts and to be honest this is how I've learned a lot is literally by talking to people especially people who are far younger than me who are just getting into the industry they seem to have this knowledge that I, I just don't have or they've come across different tools that I've just not had time to learn about and I've learned so much from talking to people and I'm, I'm sure you could learn coming into the industry from these people as well. It's, it's quite important. Anyway, that's my version of how to get an entry level job in cybersecurity. If you like this video, please do like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Catch you later.